Wilson. 30 years ago, another people marched on Washington, urging America to be America again. Before I begin today, I must pay tribute to them. I must pay tribute to that legacy. Let us remember the hundreds of thousands of African Americans, other people of color, women, unionists, and poor people who have laid the groundwork so that we could have a lesbian and gay march today. In 1963, a black gay man had a dream. Bayard Rustin's dream turned into the 1963 Civil Rights March. It was at that march where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. revealed his dream. Dr. King dreamed about a world where we could all live free from the threats of hatred, bigotry, and violence. He dreamed about a world where all people were treated as equals. He dreamed about a world where we would all be free. It was 25 years ago this month that an act of violence took Dr. King's life. I was 11 years old, but I remember that day. But more importantly, I remember Dr. King's words and his dream. He said, I have a dream today. And when he spoke about the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners, he made no distinction between the straight ones and the gay ones. When Dr. King sang, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we're free at last, he included all of us. I'm a black gay man. My great-grandfather was a slave. I'm a part of that dream, and so are you. The Jesse Helms who discriminates against HIV-infected immigrants in 1993 is the same Jesse Helms who discriminated against black school children in North Carolina in 1954. We're a part of the dream. The Strom Thurmond, who tried to undermine the Civil Rights March in 1963, is the same Strom Thurmond who's trying to undermine lesbian and gay men in the military in 1993. We're a part of the dream. Fifteen years ago, Pat Parker asked, where will you be when they come? They will come in business suits, she said, to buy your homes and bring bodies to fill your jobs. And I must ask you, where will you be? Pat warned that they would not come clothed in brown and swastikas. The time and need for ruses are over. Today, I must take assessment, look to you and ask, where will you be when they come? Because they are here. They have names like Jesse Helms, Randall Terry, Clarence Thomas, Colin Powell and Sam Nunn. The time and need for ruses are over. They are winning the battle in, with, over gays and lesbians in the military. They codified hate and violence in Colorado. The immigration ban on people with HIV is worse than ever. And Haitians are dying every day in concentration camps in Guantanamo Bay. With self-righteous sanctity, they are ready to X away our right to life. It is not enough to march on Washington on one Sunday every five years. There were 750,000 of us in 1987, and the next day they passed the Helms Amendment. We must resist every attempt to move us backwards. We have an obligation to ourselves and to all America. We must wa march on Washington, but we must march on Albany, New York, Sacramento, California, and Denver, Colorado. We must write letters, send telegrams, make telephone calls. We must make our voices heard in city halls, state houses, both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue, and both sides of the aisle. The human rights struggle for lesbian and gay people is a part of America's unfinished business. It is a part of the unfinished civil rights agenda. People are asking us, what do we want? We want to prevent people from getting HIV. 
We want adequate care for people with AIDS. We want a cure. We want access for all Americans. We want to work without fear of losing our jobs because of who we are. We want to live without fear of losing our homes because of who we are. We want to live without fear of losing our lives to violence because of who we are. We want what every American wants, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We want America to really be America. It is really a simple matter of, a just, of justice. President Clinton said he have a vision of America and you're a part of it. So I must ask you about your vision and who's a part of it. Are your lesbian sisters a part of the vision? Are your gay brothers of color a part of the vision? Are your brothers and sisters living with AIDS a part of the vision? Are your sisters fighting for the right to control their bodies a part of the vision? Because if we are not all a part of the vision, the vision is an illusion and we need no more illusions. Today I say to African Americans across this country, as you work to, to fulfill the dream, make sure that we are a part of the dream. Because if we're not all a part of the dream, then you're turning the dream into a nightmare. Today, we march for the dream. Today, we march for the vision. We march for justice. Keep on marching. Keep on marching. Keep on marching. Don't let Jesse Elms turn you around. Keep on marching. Don't let Sam Nunn turn you around. Keep on marching. Don't let Colin Powell turn you around. Keep on marching. Keep on marching. Keep on marching. Freedom is ours. Okay. Well, I for one have to tell you it's very difficult being a lesbian and trying to figure